18 Crazy Facts About Disney With more than 25,000 rooms available at the Disney World Resort, it would take you exactly 68.49 years to sleep in every single one of those lovely rooms. To put that number into perspective, that's pretty much the average lifespan of a human being. That's crazy. The Walt Disney World Resort, also known as Disney World, was first opened in October of 1971 in Orlando, Florida. It has more than 52.5 million visitors annually. Of course, it's owned by the Walt Disney Company. The property is almost as large as the city of San Francisco. Yep, both include more than 40 square miles of land. Disney houses four theme parks, 24 themed resorts, two water parks, and several additional entertainment and recreational venues. But Disney doesn't use much of the land as it's technically classified as a wildlife area. So, who remembers that two-minute storm scene in The Little Mermaid? Yeah, it looked incredible, didn't it? Well, the shocking fact about Disney here is that it took 10 special effects artists more than a year to create that scene. That is a very long time, but with the lack of water movement technologies at the time, it's easy to imagine why it would take that long. That explains why creating a single frame of Sully in Monsters, Inc. took an average of 12 hours to produce. Engineers at the Pixar Studios were scratching their heads. They were trying to figure out a reasonable and efficient way to deal with the movement and feel of one of the main characters' fur. The two tests produced were not satisfactory in their results, where due to the sheer quantity of fur, it was getting caught in different objects. In the end, Pixar set up a new department and worked on a fur simulation program, FITS. This allows Sully's fur to move in a natural way by being attached after Sully's movement had first been animated. His fur was so accurate in its movement that it would even take into consideration the forces of wind and gravity. This is definitely one of the shocking facts about Disney. In 1928, Walt Disney created the first ever animated cartoon with sound. This was groundbreaking. So in 1932, when Herbert Kalmus approached Disney to make a film using the new three-color process, Disney quickly accepted. Even though many of his colleagues, including his brother, completely disagreed with Disney for dumping a movie which was already in production for a new process, he went on with it. And he turned out to be right. Flowers and Trees, the movie remade with the new technology, was a sensation as the film ended up winning an Oscar for its troubles. While we're on the subject of Pixar and their groundbreaking films, during the summer of 1994, while producing their first feature film, Toy Story, the key Pixar creative minds had a now famous lunch in a diner in Point Richmond. During this lunch meeting, they ended up brainstorming the ideas that would eventually become the films A Bug's Life, Monsters, Inc., Finding Nemo, and WALL-E. The story has become a part of mythical film animation legend and a cornerstone moment for Pixar. So much so that it was even featured in the teaser trailer for WALL-E. Steve Jobs' 2006 sale of Pixar Animation Studios to Disney gave him a 7.3% stake in the media giant and a seat on its board. His legacy, which is a shocking fact about Disney, is so great that it can be seen in virtually every corner of Disney, from the budding resurgence of Walt Disney Animation Studios to the $1 billion overhaul of Disney's California Adventure and the expansion of its cruise line, according to the accounts of about a dozen current and former executives of Disney and Apple. Ving Rhames, the actor who voiced Cobra Bubbles in Lilo and Stitch, also played the gangster Marcellus Wallace in Pulp Fiction. Their earrings even match. Considering the amount of gangsters in Lilo and Stitch, and the fact that Stitch is a pretty big little thug who, in the original script, was also the leader of a gang, this film is probably more indebted to Pulp Fiction than any children's film should be. It's pretty much safe to say that Snow White is one of the most popular Disney films of all time. But did you know that the film itself cost Disney Studios $1.4 million to create? It was widely derided as Disney's ruin by people who were later proved very, very wrong. Adjusted for inflation, it's one of the 10 highest grossing films ever made. 
just goes to show how far Disney has come from being in a situation of almost becoming bankrupt to being one of the biggest conglomerates in the entire world. Another one of the shocking facts about Disney is that actor and comedian Steve Martin used to sell guidebooks at Disneyland on weekends and during his summer vacations from school. This lasted three years, from 1955 to 1958. During this time, he even frequented the Main Street Magic Shop, where he learned how to demonstrate tricks to potential customers. In 1999 and 2001, Disney shut down two of its parks in Disney World, Discovery Island and River Country, respectively. They were closed due to a new Florida law that forbade non-chlorinated natural water from being used in amusement parks. But the company chose not to demolish either of them, so they remain standing and rotting today. In 2009, a brave man named Shane Perez visited the island. You can see photos of the abandoned parks here. The adorable science fiction romantic movie WALL-E was released in 2008. It was produced by Pixar and distributed by Disney. Even though the name sounds strange at first, it was inspired by Walt Disney, who co-founded Disney along with his brother. Disney helped fan the flames of the 1940s Red Scare. He was a founder of the Motion Picture Alliance for the Preservation of America's Ideals, accusing workers on strike of communist plots, testifying against labor organizers, and icing out rumored communists of Hollywood. Disney's final words remain a bizarre mystery. On his deathbed, he wrote the name Kurt Russell on a piece of paper. Even Kurt Russell himself is perplexed as to the meaning of the note. He was a child actor at the time of Disney's death, having just recently signed on with Disney Studios. Disney was a train fanatic. His fascination began as a child when he would watch the trains pass by near his house. His uncle, a train conductor, would blow the whistle as a greeting. Later, as an adult, Disney built a miniature steam railroad in the backyard of his Los Angeles home. Seeing the joy it brought to his daughters, he became determined to incorporate a monorail into Disneyland. There's a tradition of guests bringing the cremated ashes of their loved ones and scattering them in the haunted mansion. Although these poor souls are vacuumed up each night by the cleaning crew, there are still human remains in the park. One of the beds in Pirates of the Caribbean has a headboard that contains real bones, because those are the perks of a pirate's life, sleeping on furniture built from the corpses of your enemies. Sleep number can't compete with the shut-eye you can get on top of Blackbeard's femurs. When you think about it, Disney always implements tropes into their films. There's always going to be a princess in some way, shape, or form, there's always going to be a prince, and there's always going to be a sassy horse sidekick. No, really, they've got several films with a sassy horse sidekick. Out of Disney's most popular animated films, there have been 11 horse sidekicks, each with its own personality, making horses far and away the most popular of the animal sidekicks. This is partially because they're the main mode of transportation available in medieval fairy tale land, but it's also because horses are apparently very easily characterized as sassy. However, without Maximus, Pegasus, Bullseye, Citron, Angus, Buck, Philippe, Khan, Achilles, Samson, and Major, their respective films would not have been the same. Okay, so we're gonna end on a dark note now. If you don't want your childhood ruined, you may want to stop the video here. Still here? Okay. So it had been rumored that Walt Disney and the company itself was anti-Semitic. Disney attended meetings of the German-American Bund in the 1930s, a pro-Nazi organization. He also hosted known Nazi propagandist and filmmaker Leni Raffenstahl, giving her a tour of the Disney Studios. Despite this, others claim rumors of Disney's anti-Semitism to be false. And while we're on the topic of Nazis, let's not forget a cartoon that was released by Disney back in 1943 titled Der Führer's Face. Although this was created as anti-Nazi propaganda, it's hard to shake the image of Donald Duck dressed up as a Nazi while he's either working on creating ammunition, saluting a picture of Hitler himself, or reading Mein Kampf. Simply disturbing.